Good evening, everybody. I do hope that you've all been able to join us effectively. Uh, my name is Quinton McKellar. I'm the Vice Chancellor at the University of Hertfordshire, and it's my very great pleasure to welcome you to our first ever virtual graduation ceremony. Um, can I begin by welcoming all Jeff's guests and the guests of the university? And, and of course, um, we've convened for the conferment of an honorary degree. Can I also introduce Professor Julie Newland, who will be with you in a moment and who will be reading the citation. Uh, before we do that, can I just point out that we've um, arranged my computer in such a way that you can see the university's mace behind me. This is normally carried in in any of our graduation ceremonies by the secretary and registrar of the university. And normally it's there for my protection, but of course uh, today, because uh, I'm effectively on my own in our reception area, uh, we don't need to have it out of its case, but it's a beautiful object to look at anyway. I'm now going to start the proceedings and I'm going to ask um, uh, if uh, Professor Newland can read the citation for the conferment of an honorary degree of science upon Professor Geoffrey Idle. Good afternoon, Vice Chancellor, guests. It is my pleasure to read the citation for the presentation of the honorary award of Doctor of Science on Professor Geoffrey Idle. Professor Idle has held important positions in medical research at a number of prestigious institutions in the UK and Europe, and is now based at Long Island University in New York. Even as a child, Geoffrey says that medicine held a fascination for him. A likely reason for this is that he sadly lost his father when Geoffrey was only eight years old. He remembers being in primary school and drawing pictures of the human heart and other internal organs when other children were drawing trains and aeroplanes. From the farm in Cumbria where he was born, Geoffrey moved south to attend Hatfield Polytechnic and graduated in 1972 with a BSc in chemistry, followed by a first class honours BSc in medicinal chemistry the following year. At the same time, he received the Smith, Klein and French prize for best performance by a science student, which was a complete surprise to him when it was announced at the graduation. Geoffrey learned a huge amount from his two industrial placements as part of his degrees and from the other skills he acquired while he was at Hatfield, including computer programming, for which Hatfield was really ahead of its time back in the early 1970s, as well as writing programs to analyze data. We should mention the fact that Geoffrey wrote programs to generate random numbers for the football pools too. He says that the quality of the education and opportunities on offer at Hatfield were second to none. These skills enabled Geoffrey to hit the ground running when he started on the PhD programme at St Mary's Hospital Medical School, which is now Imperial College in London, and it set him apart from his fellow PhD students. So much so that when a lectureship vacancy arose, he was appointed after only two years of the programme, ahead of other more senior students. In 1977, Geoffrey discovered his first genetic polymorphism of cytochrome P450, a gene that controls how a significant number of prescribed drugs are converted to metabolites. His findings were submitted to The Lancet and published on his 27th birthday. A few years later, Geoffrey was appointed as the first chair of pharmacogenetics and head of the School of Clinical Medical Sciences at the University of Newcastle. During his time there, he developed a large research group and also founded the Journal of Pharmacogenetics. And if this wasn't enough to keep him busy, he also founded the campus biotech company, Genotype Limited. This was the first company to provide genetic services to the pharmaceutical industry and to the National Institute of Health. Professor Idle's wide-ranging research history 
covers areas such as drug metab metabolism, pharmacogenetics, metabolomics and lipidomics, particularly as applied to medicine. And he has written or contributed to more than 400 academic articles. He is also a reviewer for a number of academic journals and has sat on the editorial board for biochemical pharmacology since 2010. He has been director and endowed professor at Arthur G. Zupko's Systems Pharmacology and Pharmacogenomics at Long Island University since 2018. He remembers arriving at JFK in New York at the beginning of January and then being snowed in at an airport hotel for more than a week before being able to take up the post. Professor Idle continues to lecture on pharmacology and pharmacogenomics and is a fellow of the Royal Society of Chemistry, the Royal Society of Biology and the British Pharmacological Society. He was recognized by Marquis Who's Who top educators and scientists in January 2020 for his dedication, achievements and leadership in the field of pharmaceuticals. Vice Chancellor, in recognition of outstanding achievement, I ask you ask that you confer the honorary award of Doctor of Science upon Professor Geoffrey Idol. Thank you very much, Professor Newland. Professor Idol, I'm delighted now to confer upon you the award of Honorary Doctor of Science. And uh, please, if you have the, the scroll, now is the opportunity to pick it up. I would normally hand it to you at this point. Wonderful. Thank you. What a fantastic CV that was, Geoffrey. Uh, really marvellous to hear about your achievements. I now, of course, invite you to address our guests and to accept your award. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor McKellar and Professor Newland. Uh, this, I have to say, is the uh, most exciting day uh, of my life, with the exception of the birth of my daughter, Nadia, who is uh, also on this call, I believe. Uh, as fate would have it, to the day, 23rd of September in 1968, that was the first day I attended uh, Hatfield Polytechnic, or as it was then, Hatfield College of Technology. Uh, as a member of the class STF1, uh, we, uh, we gathered in the room LC109. You can see what an impact the place had on me that I remember these acronyms. And uh, all 25 or so of us uh, sat in that space and it was to become a prison for me for the next year uh, with uh, because the lectures were basically 40 hours a week together with the practical labs. Uh, sitting behind me I noticed uh, a, uh, a, a young man with long flowing black hair and I'd never seen someone with black hair because in, 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 in Kendall uh, where I came from Everyone is a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. In fact, in my school, there were only five Catholics. So it's a real backwater that I uh, originated from. So uh, this young man, I was later to discover, was half Italian and half Arsenal supporter. And you can imagine which half gave him his, uh, his uh, good looks. So I'm grateful to Terry because he introduced me to the music scene in London and we visited a lot of places, saw a lot of bands playing live while we were students. The student days were, in fact, from those points of view, very uh, en enjoyable. But what Hadfield did for me was not just a lecture to me, but it trained me. It trained me into a professional chemist. I had the chance to, to work at uh, two drug companies um, over my time, and a total of 15 months at the, of the time I was there. So that when I then um, moved to St. Mary's Hospital Medical School, as been said, I found that the other PhD students in the lab really had very few skills. They might have come from 
very famous universities and me from a polytechnic, but they weren't able to do even the simplest of things in the lab. So I remember they had a thing called a liquid scintillation counter, which the PhD students took turns in calibrating every month. And I said to an assembled group of students, PhD students, well, I could write a computer program to do that, and I can still hear the laughter. Well, they were wrong. I did, and it transformed everything on how that instrument was used. Because, of course, Hatfield had a fantastic computer center that I had used regularly and, and writing programs in, in uh, languages like BASIC and Fortran, like then has been said in the, in the, early, in the early 70s. So uh, it gave me all these skills. And whilst at St. Mary's, I also met another lifelong friend who I believe is also on the call, Lawrence Wakeow, and he and I together uh, founded an important institution. It was a table tennis and doubles team, and it became known as the Invincibles. And we had a lot of fun with that, with that too. And Lawrence, I hope, is on the call and has those memories also. So science that I learned at Hatfield has taken me on a, a long journey, not only all around the world with probably 200 trips to the United States. The first night I stayed in a hotel uh, in the United States was in, on Waikiki Beach in Honolulu when I went to attend a conference on, on cancer at, in Hawaii. This is all, all emanated from my, 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 my training uh, at Hatfield, but also the journey has taken me into the, uh, into deep into the inside of cells, and that's been really important in my pro professional life. On one of my uh, dozens and dozens of visits to New York, I also met another long-term friend, Anthony Curcio, who I hope is uh, is on the call too. So finally, after after London. Newcastle, Trondheim in Norway, Prague in the Czech Republic, and Bern in Switzerland, uh, I now, now find myself uh, in uh, New York City. And I would like to introduce my, uh, my guests and my colleagues, Dr. Arash Dabastani, who is the Dean of Pharmacy, uh, Dr. Randy Bird, who is the university's senior vice um, Vice President, and Dr. Deren Biolu, my highly trusted colleague and uh, Associate Director in our little institute. And I can't leave without a message for your students. And that would be as follows. You know, universities, most of them, just teach students. It's a continuation of high school, but at a much higher level. The University of Hertfordshire did something very different for me and will do it for you too. And that is it trains you. It trains you to be a professional. It trains you to become um, whatever you want to be. If you, you're interested in biology or in a branch of engineering, or in my case, in chemistry, it, it gave me a superb training with all the additional skills so important today, like computer science. So if you want to be trained and want to be able to get a job and want to be able to move out of, uh, out of your student housing, not, don't just attend the lectures, but make sure you go to a university like University of Hertfordshire. And I wish all students who watch this when it becomes a video on YouTube well with your endeavors and um, congratulations to you if you're a student of the University of Hertfordshire. So with that, Professor McKellar, thank you very much. Jeffrey, thank you very much. That's fabulous and wonderful words of wisdom there for our students, but also uh, extraordinary insight into your own career, which is, is absolutely fantastic. Um, I do, of course, hope that we are able to have a, an in-person meeting at some point in the near future, either in New York or here in in uh, the United Kingdom where we can perhaps chew the fat because I'd be very, I mean, while I'm, my own uh, background is in veterinary pharmacology, so I'm really interested in, in your studies on cytochrome, but I'd also be particularly interested because I came from a small farm 
in the west of Scotland. So it would be interesting to talk about your experiences from Cumbria, uh, because I imagine the farming there was very similar. It was very much a hill farm with sheep and cattle and so on. And I imagine you and I had a very similar upbringing. Actually, if I could respond to that, that's absolutely right. And uh, it was a farm on a hill in what was, I have to point out, Westmoreland. Cumbria was, uh, was Cumberland was the dreaded county to the north, and we were forced to be combined, I think, under the Thatcher government into Cumbria. So uh, a little hill farm in a town or a village or an area with the interesting name Boston. And it's uh, fascinating to me that as a boy who lived on a farm for the first years of his life, in Boston, in England, ended up in New York collaborating with colleagues in Boston at Harvard. Just one letter has been deleted from the gene W. That's fantastic. Well, I can almost match that because I came from a little town, uh, a little village called Loch Winnoch, but the farm that I came from was called Heathfield, which is not that unsimilar to Hatfield. So I can just about match you on a kind of uh, uh, syntax uh, uh, issue. But Jeffrey, it really has been a pleasure. I'm conscious that you've got a lot of guests there. I hope they're able to celebrate in whatever way they choose to do so this evening uh, on your behalf, whether they're with you in person or whether they can do so in isolation. But, but it's, it's really uh, a, a great pleasure for me to welcome you into our uh, alumni again, uh, you know, as a, an honorary doctorate in this occasion. And I do hope that you and your guests enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor McKellar.